All right, so now let's go through the process of building a model. As in previous lectures, we'll start with a simple feature function, phi. So phi, in this case, will be our, our mapping from our data frame uh, to the appropriate features we want to use in our regression model. Again, we're going to try to predict miles per gallon, so that's the thing we're, we're predicting. And the initial features we will use are characteristics of the engine, the cylinders, and their displacement. So let's give a rough uh, guess as to, to how much volume of, of space we need to fill with fuel. So a pretty good estimate, or at least should be a pretty good uh, uh, features in predicting the mileage. So we'll make our feature function. Here the feature function takes a data frame and is going to extract the columns that we need. Uh, we're going to use scikit-learn's linear regression package. We already imported it, but just a reminder, I'm importing linear regression from the linear models uh, module of scikit-learn. And we'll create a basic model uh, with the default settings for the linear regression package. Uh, so it will automatically have an intercept. Um, we will not normalize the data. Uh, we'll come back to data normalization again when we get to regularization. Uh, so those are our basic settings. Uh, we now fit the model. So here we take our feature function uh, fee and we apply it to our training data, not our test data. Feeding in the, this will be our X values or our capital fee values since they're featureized. Uh, and then the Y values will be the miles per gallon read directly from the uh, data frame. So we train our model. Uh, so now we fit the model uh, and we can now make predictions uh, and, and measure the error. So we're going to use the root mean squared error, which is just the, the mean squared error that we've used before. And then we take the square root of it. Uh, let me scroll this up so you can see it better. Uh, so we take the square root of it so that everything is in the correct units. Uh, if we take the squared error, uh, then we're getting essentially miles per gallon error squared, um, and we want to look at it in, in the uh, form of, of miles per gallon. So now we can take our model, uh, make predictions for all of the training data, and this is going to be our y hat, our predicted miles per gallon for each of the training uh, data points. We can also get the true observed y for each of the training data points, and we're looking at the root mean squared error between the two. Um, should run this function here, run this. Uh, and so we're getting root mean squared error, which is about 4.5 miles per gallon. It's not bad. So, you know, on average, the, the square root of this, the, the squared error, the, the average uh, squared error is, is 4.58. Um, the, the average squared error is going to be biased towards our, our um, outliers or the data points we, we least uh, well predict. But even then, we're, we're still at about 4.58. So this is a pretty good estimator of the fuel economy uh, of each of the vehicles. So not a bad start. Out of curiosity, uh, and again, you should not do this, uh, but we're going to go ahead and cheat and take a quick look at what would happen if we made predictions on our test data set. I, I want to do this just to give you an idea of what's going on. In practice, you would not do this until you're done the modeling process. And instead, you'd use cross-validation, which I'll explain in a moment, uh, to, to actually get a guess as to what the test data would look like. All right, so we're going to take the test data. This is cheating. We're going to apply our feature function. Again, we need to apply the same feature function we used in training to our test data set. So we're going to uh, make predictions. So using the model we trained just on the training data uh, to make a prediction for the miles per gallon. So that's going to be the y hat, uh, predicted y, uh, miles per gallon for each of our test records. Uh, and we'll, we'll get the true miles per gallon. And here's what we get. So our test data uh, has a slightly higher error than our training data. And we'd expect that because we fit our model, we optimize it to minimize the training error and not the test error. The test error is, is more reflective of what we would see if we were to encounter new data from that same distribution. All right, so we just finished fitting a model. You might have noticed in the process of both fitting and then evaluating the model, we needed to rem remember to apply the, phi, the feature function phi at each step. Uh, this could actually be a bit challenging to do when our feature functions get more complex, whereas we're developing lots of uh, feature functions at once. Um, just keeping track of which feature functions to apply at training and then again at test time um, can, can be a little bit challenging. Uh, so a lot of different machine learning frameworks have a concept called a pipeline, which allows you to, to compose multiple stages of feature transformation, some of which might themselves require some tuning or learning on the training data set, and then record those as part of the model so that at test time they're automatically applied. So in the next video, we'll walk through how we do that using scikit-learn's pipelines module.